Good energy, good energy. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take you on a, a ride to Rwanda with the Rwandan rhythm. Are you ready to, do, to learn some bit of rhythm? Do you love rhythms? Beats? Yeah? Okay, let's stand. Because we, we, we don't sit long in Rwanda. We really, we are always on our feet. Just stand and just let your hands free, your hands free, and then we go. Okay, listen. This has to be effortless. No energy, no, 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 no fight. Just let it flow, let it flow. And it goes like, tan, 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 right? Are we ready to go for this? Let's go, hey. hi yes, hi. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Take it faster. With more energy. With more feeling. With more fire. Ay! You can never see it. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Uh, just turn to your neighbor and give them high five and tell them we made it. <laughs> you look great. Turn to your other neighbor and tell them you look great. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> With a smile. Come on, guys. We're not talking about anything economics, no impact things. No, 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 no. Just breathe, 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 breathe. We are here to breathe. <laughs> yeah, my name is Hope. And it comes with a purpose. It comes with an intention. I was named Hope because I was born and raised as a refugee. And because my father was hopeless, he named me Hope. <laughs> so all kids born at around my time, I was born and raised in Uganda, that's how I was born. So all children born around my time have names that their parents never had. And they have names like name them, Joy, Hope, Faith, Happiness, come on, add on your names. <laughs> anything that you feel like you don't have, anything positive. Patience, <laughs> charity, <laughs> peace. <laughs> Guys, you don't have any good things, any good words there. That's what they named us. So I have come to believe the power of words because I am... I don't know, a radical, optimistic person. Like, I believe things will happen regardless of the circumstances we're in. There is always a window for things to happen right. Do you believe the same? Or you're always like, I don't know. <laughs> how I, you know, I don't know. But this is how my mother raised me up. She raised me up, reminding me that I was born to plant seeds of hope, joy, and peace, and love. Those are the, that's my mission on earth. And regardless of the circumstance I've gone through, that's what I believe it should be. And I believe in that, and I am that. <laughs> and I am that. The amazing power of words really comes to me strongly. When I looked at the theme of this conference, I just picked two words. I don't know what words you picked, but for me this word, speed, trust, Hey, how do you speed trust? Something cannot go in a shop and buy like a painkiller. <laughs> how do you speed trust? People tell me, how do you speed trust? By trusting. But what, what blocks you from trusting? Fear. And at what point did the door open to invite that into, our, into your heart? I don't know, but we all have our times when those doors opened. If, if mistrust was a person, and then a door opens, and this person walks in your heart and takes legal residence, two years, one week, four weeks, 10 years, becomes generational, 50 years, you die and pass it on to another generation, and another generation passes, uh, passes on this same thing to another generation, what happens? Ah, the silence is so loud. At what point did you open a door, or when a door, go, or when a door was open and there was an invitation of this guest into your heart? Supposing your heart was a house, and there's this guest in that 
one of the rooms in your heart? At, one, at what point do you have the courage to face this guest and say, well, you know what, enough is enough, out of my house. And this is all what we do. We just need to kick this guest out. Once you know that you're, you're dining with this guest for Christmas, your birthday, you have this guest, you go out with friends to play, you still have this guest, which guest is, has become chronic of. At one point, um, I was working on a, doc a documentary in Rwanda called uh, Forgiveness and Justice. And I had to interview a perpetrator whose name was Emmanuel. Nice name, Emmanuel. <laughs> this perpetrator was manipulated to kill children. He killed children of his neighbors. Why? Because it all is traced, it, 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 it's all traced back to colonialist scam and gave us identities, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, nothing ever justifies why a 30-year-old man would kill a baby. Not strong enough to fight him back. When, a baby, when you slap a baby, they smile at you. And when you try to kill them, they think you're making a mistake. And they smile back, then they die smiling because it's dead, it's, it's innocent, eliminated. So, Emmanuel served his sentence, but there was a woman on that same hill called Beatrice. Beatrice's husband had been killed in the swamp nearby their home on that hill. These are the amazing stories you find in Rwanda. But there was an urgency for reconciliation. There was an urgency to forgive. But how can you forgive someone if you cannot trust them? But his story is really amazing. After he served his sentences, he went back to a journey to go and ask Beatrice Forgiveness, but Beatrice could not trust him. So he started to look for ways and how Beatrice can trust him. So he pretended one day, every time he approached Beatrice to go and ask for forgiveness, Beatrice fainted or got traumatized or had to be carried to a hospital. She faced all these things because he had killed three of her children. But he still had the courage to go and tell him and tell her, forgive me. Because he had been forgiven by the community. He had written letters to, his, to all the people in that village to forgive him. They had forgiven him, but Man Manuel was facing a problem of not forgiving himself. And he says, every month of April, I hide and cry because the voices of the children I killed tell me, don't kill me. So he tried several times to make an attempt to go and ask for forgiveness. And I think on the fifth day, he, uh, he went, pretended that was asking for something else, not for forgiveness. He said it's something small, not for forgiveness. So he went and asked for Beatrice for beans to cook. And Beatrice gave him beans to go and cook. But when he took beans home, he could not trust whether these beans were okay. So he thought maybe these beans, now who's suffering with mistrust? Who's, mis who's not trusting who? He said, ah! Beatrice, these beans could be poisoned. If I cook them, I could die. So he threw away the beans hmm? because he couldn't trust the woman he had killed for if he had, she had really given him beans that are not poisoned. So on the sixth day, he goes now to ask for forgiveness, but Beatrice asks him, I'll believe you if you come with your family. But remember, uh, Manuel had served all his sentence without his children knowing he had killed or whatever crime he had done, only his wife knew. So this is when generations suffer not being told the truth. So it's not until Beatrice told, uh, told Manuel, if you come with your children and with your, whole family, and with your, your wife, then I will believe you, you're asking me for forgiveness. So now he had to go through the torment of telling his children what he had done. So he had to tell them the truth. And now the children started, started looking at their father as a murderer. But again, they love, his fa they love their father. So he got his children and his wife went to Beatrice to ask for forgiveness. And that's the time he was given forgiveness. He was forgiven. But look at what he went through to ask for forgiveness. And I don't know the kind of trust we're also suffering. I don't know what doors opened in our own lives to open this kind of uh, those that invite these unwanted guests in our hearts. And uh, for me, it's very important that 
we always have to look at, much as we are talking about money and about projects, we also need to know where is this seed being planted? Are we informing ourselves enough? For, is, for instance, like, do we know that in, the, in, in, a, in a country that has failed, there are two pathways to violence and a pathway to healing? The pathway to violence has 10 stages. The, the ninth stage is dehumanization. When you strip me the jacket of humanity and you don't see me in your eyes and you don't see me as a person, then I'm no longer human. When you start calling me names as cockroach or snake or whatever it is, I don't know. And these things, these behaviors begin in school. But when a country reaches that stage of the stage nine, the next step is a failed state. But when there's a will to embrace the path way to healing, there is number five, which I love most, which is empathy. And that's why my festival lies. I am because you are, you are because I am. My pain today could be a pain tomorrow. So these are the kind of things we address every other day of our lives. And I just want you to hold this space right now. And uh, before I can read you my nice poem, which I think is very nice. I would love you to just touch your heart and close your eyes. And let this heart that you're touching is a house. And in that house is unwanted guest that was given an, an invitation at some point in your life, either when you were a child or yesterday or even today. Grab this guest in your, feet, in your palm. Bring your hand forward. Your hand forward in a fist like this. You're holding them. And let's bring this other hand and let's like start mashing this, this energy. This energy. Let's mash it. Like go. I, I want to hear this noise. I want to hear this noise. And let's start like crushing it like like rain, like rain, like rain. And we are going to hit it like thunder. One, two, three, go. Go. I hope this helps. <laughs> I hope you feel free. Do you feel something? <laughs> like freedom, freedom. <laughs> Sometimes people think freedom is the flag. But freedom is here. When you go back and lie on your bed and face the wall up, that's where freedom lies. The conversation you're having, we've got some work to do on our inner universe. We've got some inner work to do. And I urge you and call upon your, your courage to face the truth, however painful it may be, to just tap on that, because it destroys. It's a cancer. You wake up one morning and you, everything around you just looks bad because there's something still holding you there. I know that. The festival I ran takes place at Kigali Genocide Memorial. There are 250,000 people buried there. And I looked to the most craziest person to, carry, to do a festival in this space. But there was a reason. Can we do a festival in a space where there's loud silence? Why you can walk out of a performance without clapping, but at least walk out thinking? Can we think? Can we reflect? Can we go through a process of introspection? Okay, now the poem is here. <laughs> I don't want you to feel like sad, sad, sad or anything. Um, I'm going to read this poem. Uh, this poem, when I was, the festival I'm just talking about, when it was about three weeks to this festival, I lost my mother. She was my everything, my energy, my prayer warrior, my everything, like my cheer and my everything. So, but her growing up in all the refugee camps she was, she, was, she was working in, she encouraged us not ever to be sad, to always tap on the inner child that we hold and we play like a child. I don't know how many times you play. Some people think playing is stupid, but playing is innovation. <laughs> Playfulness is creativity. If you don't tap on that inner child and we close them with fear, you don't create nothing. But that child is God. So I lost her three weeks before, 
and my friends were now beginning to arrive in, in, my, in the country to, for the festival, I went in my room, I crashed on my bed, I slept, tears dried on my cheeks, but I woke up to her voice saying these words to me. And the, these are the words I want to leave you with. Yeah, I have to add another pair of lenses. <laughs> Run along and play. Head for the hills and play, my child. Abide by your faith. Fear not to trip. You were born to fly. Free your spirit. Float above. Just be and let be. Breathe the life of life. Bygones are bygones. Run and play. Trip and fall. Roll and laugh. Stand and breathe. Run. 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 Can we stand up and run? I'm lying. You just said <laughs> I'll stop it there. Thank you so much. Thank you.